Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da. Habitatullah, a question was asked. Assalamu alaikum brother. Assalamu alaikum brother. The sheikh who I'm studying with and studying with had studied in Iraq. He calls to the book in the sunnah and he follows the aqidah of the salaf. But in certain issues of fiqh, I found that he follows some of the khalaf. But he... He has been the most reliable person I have met. He calls me to Bin Baz, Bin Uthaymeen, and he follows the authentication of Al Albani. But some Salafi brothers have told me that there are no real Salafis in Iraq and have openly disrespected him on, a, on an issue where there is ikhtilaf. And now I'm just out of people to learn from, as everybody else where I am are openly callers to Hizb Tahrir. Ikhwan and others, so I'm just finding it impossible to learn anything as I can't study abroad like I wish to as I have To take care financially uh, of my parents. I have to take care of my parents May Allah accept our good in this blessed month And I just wanted your advice as you're the only brother connected to the scholars who I'm able to contact First and foremost, Allah yubarak fikum and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ikhlas with the bad ala sunnah to Nabi Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam Secondly, as far as being connected to the scholar, scholars, alhamdulillah, I do uh, call some of the scholars, but unfortunately, I don't really study as I was able to in the past when I lived in places like Medina and in many other places because now my life revolves around my job, unfortunately, and other responsibilities. So, uh, you know, I call some, some, of the, some scholars occasionally, but I don't really have that kind of connection. But mashallah, tabarak wa ta'ala, there's a lot of uh, students of knowledge in Medina and in other places who are, you know, in Riyadh and Jeddah and all over the kingdom who, willillahi alhamd, are studying with ulama and are much more connected. Anyhow, as far as getting down to your question, there used to be in the past, I, I recall, uh, some brothers, this was in the time of the fitna of one particular sheikh that was upheld by some of the brothers. They held him as a big alama. They said, alama so-and-so, and he's so such and such this. And then they even propagated a lot of his false principles, okay? And one of the statements that he said that was false is he said he took out the whole continent, the whole subcontinent of India, said there's no Salafi scholars. That is the most ridiculous and insane statement, and your antenna should go up anytime you hear those kind of statements that there's no... You're talking about Iraq, okay? Iraq is a very large country. Iraq is a place that has so much Islamic history and so much Islamic knowledge from the past and so many ulama sunnah throughout history to say and write off the whole country of Iraq and say there are no Salafis or no Salafi scholars in Iraq is absolutely... Um, preposterous that people would say make this claim and what i would first and foremost say is exactly like our sheikh Suleiman al-Rahili said when the fitna around sheikh ibrahim was coming to him and some of the students had said some things about sheikh ibrahim and he mentioned he said kadaboon <laughs> he said they are liars because he knew what they were saying it was just exaggeration and people were just piling on stuff doing things to belittle the sheikh Instead of sticking with the issues. Likewise, it's very important to be cautious of any time you hear statements like this. And look at who these people, you said some Salafi brothers. Well, we don't know who these people are. We don't know what their knowledge level is. And how dare they make a claim like this about a whole country. You know, a country they've probably never seen. Okay? And it would be better... Of course, to ask the people of knowledge of who to, uh, if someone was going to study there or whatever the case may be. Moving on more specifically to what you said, you said this brother is teaching you the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, according to the method of the salaf. What is there to ask about after that? Really? Uh, and then there's some issues in fiqh. I don't know anyone who's agreeing 100% in fiqh uh, in every masail, and that even have an ikhtilaf sometimes in masail relating to uh, minhaj, minhajia issues. You know, issues where there could be ijtihad, where there's room for ijtihad. For example, an issue of possibly even making takfir of a particular individual or making tabdi' 
declaring a particular individual to be a mubtedia. It's impossible that everyone's going to uh, uh, agree at the same time. And we can think of countless examples through history, but we can even think amongst the mu'asirin, amongst the ulama, and even some of the ulama that are most shadid about this issue, they differ with each other about so many individuals, and we can name names, and we can name personalities, and we can get deep into it, but we're not going to. Now, ahabatifillah, what I would say to my brother is don't waste your time with those people because what I find, and this is my experience, I've had so many people who are negative, and as Sheikh Sunnah Man Rahili, he also mentioned about the people uh, who warn against other uh, Salafis and warn against uh, places to study that are known for the Sunnah and propagating the Sunnah and people known for propagating the Sunnah. He said, Kitha Turq. He said that they are the ones who cut off. They're like the 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 people who cut the cut the cut the road, like the nusus. That it's a severe punishment for the people you mentioned in the fiqh books. Those people who are like um, who are highway robbers, because they cut off the path to good. So he made the similitude that these people are cutting off the path to good. So think about it. Think about what those individuals have to offer you. They probably have nothing but backbiting and riba and namima. And they probably don't teach you one thing. And they probably don't have the knowledge to teach you one thing. More than likely. Because this is what happens with the Shabab around the world. They get around bad company who claim that they're from Ahl Sunnah and claim that they're following the Salaf al Salih and claim this and claim that. Al Ibra bi haqqaiq laysa bi masamiyat. The reality of something is in its is substance, not in its name. And they just they confuse you. And, and I'm going to give you some examples since we opened the door. I recall in Yemen once that, uh, you know, a lot of us, in, the, in those days, there wasn't really much organization. Even in Damaj, it was uh, kind of, I found at that time, kind of unwelcoming in the sense that, you know, there was, you know, we weren't used to that. We weren't used to, there was, wasn't things organized for people who didn't really know the Arabic language. You just kind of had to immerse yourself. You get a darsh from a brother here, a darsh from a brother there. It wasn't really consistent at that time. Other people came much later. It's a, it became a totally different world after years. But at the time we were there, it was very... It was a bit more chaotic. It was hard to find a daughter. So you had maybe other Westerners teaching you who maybe had a, had more Arabic and they knew something. They were benefiting you, but it wasn't uh, it wasn't that organized. And I recall living in Sanaa after that, and how it became. Uh, some of the brothers they would warn against places to study Arabic, just Arabic institutes. Okay, they were Arabic institutes that you know they taught you the Arabic language, which you need as a tool. Okay. But the people would warn against them and make it such a political thing. Say, oh, you know, it's probably run by Ikhwanis and it's not Salafi and this and this. So they would rather you study Arabic with somebody who is not a native speaker, who's an American or what have you. And I'm not taken away from the brothers. Some of these brothers had great knowledge in Arabic and especially after years. But in that time, you know, they were, they had some knowledge, but, you know, that isn't preferable. It's preferable to go to the people who have the science, who are strong in the language. So the brothers would warn against this and warn against that, and they'd end up going to see certain brothers and sitting with them and sometimes just wasting time and not really getting benefit, you know? Instead of paying a little bit of money and going to an institute, which is going to teach you to give you those tools so you could go to Damad, so you could go here, you could sit with the Mashaikh, instead of just staying in a place of Yemen where there's a lot of Sunnah and you don't even have the tools. Just wasting time. And so this is the same thing. Is so many people, they warn, they warn, they warn against things, and they don't give you any viable uh, alternative. So my advice is not to listen to people like that, because they only cut you off from good. And the Ibra is also, I just want to mention, those are our imams, and those are our sheikhs, and that we know that, you know, generally, you know, that, that they are propagators of the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi So, we kind of use it, use them as a yardstick in a sense, but it's not restricted to them. So we just want to make that clear that we don't say, oh, you love Bin Baz, so you're from Ahl Sunnah. We don't say that necessarily. We have to be careful of those kind of statements. But he was a great imam of the Sunnah of Ahl Sunnati wil Jama'ah in this time, propagating the Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the Minhaj of the Salaf. So those imams. But, uh, you know, they had their differences in, especially in Masail Faqiyya, even issues in prayer, as is well known. Moving the finger, putting the hands on the chest, or I mean, uh, you know, after 
after coming up from uh, Rukur and, and things like this. So uh, those are issues, Ijtihadiyah, Messiah Ijtihadiyah, and as uh, many of the Bahathin and some and ulama mentioned that those issues that as long as it is not an issue where it's a clear nus or anything and they have itchy had they'll both be rewarded we go we try to do our best to follow that which is the most sound but those are issues and differences that don't should not have any effect on your muslim brotherhood nor on uh taking the knowledge from the people you know you're not going to agree with everything and maybe the an alam makes a mistake or a person or a student of knowledge makes a mistake or something that doesn't negate their elm because then you wouldn't study with no one. As Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned, you wouldn't study with anyone. We quote, we always mention Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Does he have no mistakes? There are some mistakes we could talk about. Okay? But this is not the time nor the place, nor is there benefit. But we just want to make sure that we understand the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Kulu ibn Adam khata wa khayra khata All the children of Adam, they commit sins and they make mistakes. And the best of those are those who repent. So everyone uh, makes mistakes. So no one's free from mistakes. So my advice to you is benefit from this uh, sheikh or this student of knowledge that benefited in Iraq, especially when other people are around you who have no benefit and other people maybe from Ahle Bid'ah and from Ahle Tahazib, other groups. Benefit and keep that with you at all times, meaning that you, you benefit when you have the opportunity. Don't let people shut you down. And I and this is advice for a lot of the Shabab, because a lot of the Shabab, the same question comes up. They expect the world to be exactly textbook uh, defined for them, and they'll find that it's not. You know, you have to make those opportunities because it's going to advance you. And I'll give you another story. My experience in Jeddah is I had, there were some brothers, brothers from Ahl Sunnah, may Allah forgive us in them and guide us in them. And I didn't see much benefit in just hanging out with them. And they talked about me about some issues because we, we disagreed, especially Sheikh Ibrahim, that, that issue, the fitna came up at, around that time. And, you know, one of the particular brothers, may Allah forgive us in him. And I, I still have love for him. I don't know what his feelings are towards me probably now. But, uh, you know, this issue about Sheikh Ibrahim. And he didn't even know Arabic. And he's witnessing a conversation between me and a Moroccan. The Moroccan was hot-headed and was talking a lot of stuff about, at that time, who was a good friend of mine, was Shadid Muhammad, and was talking a lot of stuff about Sheikh Ibrahim Rahali and others. And he wouldn't even let me speak. So it wasn't like we were having a discussion. The man was just, <laughs> you know, just talking. Okay, may Allah forgive us and him. Because he taught me some nice books too. I, I sat with him. He's a strong student of knowledge. Was very close to Sheikh Rabi. Anyhow, so we had this discussion, and from that, then the brothers called themselves advising me, and, and you know, Akhi Khalid, we know you for this, sending me emails and stuff, and I just told them, hey, save us both some time and just stop emailing me. Don't give me salams when you, because we work together. Don't give me salams when you work with me. Then they said, oh, brother, you're being sh shadid, and I said, listen, we're too old now. We got families, man. We're, you know, we don't need to play Mickey Mouse anymore. We've been through this stuff. We, we've seen it for years. We, we, we've been through this stuff. We're too old for this. Man. You know, let's get on with life and prepare for death. You know, let's get on and benefit. And one thing, and I'll say, the point I'm mentioning this is what I did. I, my Talib al Elm went, for me, Jeddah was beautiful and fantastic because I had a chance to study and I graduated from uh, uh, Marcus, it's called Marcus Li Ta'lim Kitab al Sunnah. It's called the Institute for, for Learning the Book and the Sunnah. And it was just a two year diploma program, and I benefited so much. That took my Talib al to another level. You know, so every place you study, you study a little bit in Yemen, you get that for, informal study. Study in Medina, I study Mashaikh, and also study in the Institute for Shu'ba, for Arabic language, and other benefits from different Mashaikh there. And you study here, you study there, you, you bring that together. But if you listen to the people, they will waste your time, they will cut you off from the good, and you, you won't benefit. I benefited a lot from that Institute, and the brothers were still just talking. I don't even know what they were doing. Talking about wrestling and MMA, maybe, I don't know. And so uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and bless us all with a class with the bat. And we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us during this holy month of Ramadan.